Although predator management is one of the categories you can choose to complete a 1D1 wildlife management plan, it should only be utilized to address a real problem that directly impacts the target species you are managing for. Predator management should only be used for biological reasons, not simply to satisfy the submission of a document. Landowners should consider how their property functions overall as a balanced ecosystem, and predators are an integral part of that dynamic. People feel they need to control predators. Well, predators are a natural part of the landscape, especially native predators. When I visit with a landowner, I want to see all those predators out there because if the predators are there, that means the prey is there. That means the ecosystem is connected and everything's healthy as a whole. Feral pigs are definitely a big issue that we deal with in Texas. One thing, they are omnivores. They eat both plant and animal matter. They can eat lots of different things. They will eat the feed that you may put out for deer. Pigs will eat that. They can be nest predators of things like turkey or quail. Feral hogs are also predators of snakes and lizards, which are another key component of a larger functioning ecosystem. Managing feral hogs will help retain the balance of your ecosystem on many levels. It can also reduce property damage. Feral hogs can cause a lot of problems for uh, infrastructure on properties as well. They're definitely a big problem. So there's several options, and generally when we talk about feral pig control, we look at all of the tools that are available, and those are generally recreational hunting, trapping, aerial gunning. You name it, we kind of throw the whole kitchen sink at them. For the wildlife tax valuation, there are intensity requirements for many of the practices. For predator control with feral pigs, you don't have to show proof of success or numbers of pigs that you harvested. You just need to show effort that you're working to try to remove those feral pigs. That one could be through pictures or through documenting traps that you use, things like that of you putting that effort in. So how many pigs have you caught last 17. year? Cool, nice. Feral hog management should be constant intensive and ongoing. It should also be conducted on a scale appropriate to the size of the property and to effectively reduce the feral hog population. Exotic fire ants can definitely be a problem in a lot of parts of Texas. There's options to manage exotic fire ants. One of those is to use commercially available pesticides. However, those commercially available pesticides can also impact your native insects. So another option would be to use boiling water. The intensity requirement for fire ant control is proper treatment of at least 10 acres or 10% of the infected area per year, whichever is more. Other feral animals that can impact wildlife include feral dogs and cats. Feral dogs can run deer and livestock. They can also depredate small animals. Feral cats kill more than 2 billion songbirds and 475 million reptiles each year. They can also impact the water quality of caves and springs. Feral dogs and feral cats can be a problem on a landscape. However, I do understand the emotional feelings that we have towards those animals. Generally, you can humanely trap them and take them to animal control or something like that. Brown-headed cowbirds are a native species here in Texas. They are also considered a predator because of the way they reproduce. So brown-headed cowbirds will basically find the nests of other birds, be it cardinals, be it mockingbirds, be it other songbirds, and they'll lay a single egg in that nest and then move to the next nest and lay an egg in that nest too. And that egg will actually hatch before the other young and it will kick the other young out of that nest and then the mother cardinal will end up feeding that cowbird baby without realizing that it's not a cardinal. So they can actually have a significant impact on native songbirds in areas. So being that they are concerned, controlling brown-headed cowbirds can be a beneficial thing for songbirds in many areas of Texas. In order for that practice to qualify for wildlife tax valuation, you have to remove a minimum of 30 brown-headed cowbirds per year. The trapping season for brown-headed cowbirds runs from March 1st through May 31st each year. Brown-headed cowbird management should be constant, intensive, and ongoing during that three-month trapping period. 
In addition to your annual report to the local tax appraiser, you will also need to file a separate annual report with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, since brown-headed cowbirds are a native bird species. Measles mammals are small mammal predators such as raccoons, skunks, possums, things like that, that can be significant nest predators of certain species of wildlife, especially your ground nesting birds like turkey and quail. There's no quite minimum number of raccoons or skunks, it's just you have to document that effort. There's no need to manage raccoons and skunks just because they may take a quail or turkey nest. A specific problem needs to exist. If turkey populations are down and nest predation is identified as the cause of the decline, then it might make sense to manage nest predators for a few years to give the turkeys a chance to rebound. After a few years, then landowners should reassess and reevaluate whether predator management is appropriate. At the same time, other efforts should include habitat management to provide more cover for turkeys and other ground nesting birds. If the ecosystem is in balance, healthy habitats will support both predators and prey. It's very important to be humane when you're doing any kind of trapping of exotic wildlife or native wildlife. It's, it's an ethical thing to take care of those animals just like you would any other animal. And it's important to check your traps daily and make sure that when you have those traps set that you have time and the ability to get out there to make sure those animals don't suffer needlessly. When not in use, traps should be removed or secured in such a way to ensure that no animals are trapped inadvertently. Coyote and bobcats are one of the first ones that most ranches talk about when they talk about predator control. That's something that they're interested in managing and, or trying to remove. Why is that? Because the perspective of that coyote or that bobcat might catch a fawn or might catch a deer at some point or a few. And so they, they want to make sure that as many deer as possible survive so that they can hunt them themselves. But deer have survived with coyotes and bobcats for a millennium and they will continue with or without us. And so it's definitely something to really think about thoughtfully. And also, again, it comes back to what is the limiting factor on your landscape and what is most important for the wildlife species you're interested in. There is evidence that coyotes can increase the size of their litters when their numbers are reduced. Furthermore, when coyotes are removed, raccoon and skunk populations increase which increases pressure on nests and ground nesting birds. If a landowner chooses to conduct predator management, it should be monitored, time limited, and done with sufficient intensity to accomplish the desired results. If quail are the target species of your management plan, there is no need to try to remove coyotes or bobcats, as they are not primarily predators of quail nests. If your target species is deer, there's no need to manage bobcats, as they primarily eat rabbits, rats, and other rodents. Again, predators play an important role in maintaining the balance of nature. Having predators on your landscape is a sign of a healthy ecosystem. Native predators are meant to be there. However, it is important to control exotic predators on your landscape as those are things that are not evolved for that ecosystem. So things like fire ants or feral hogs can be a problem for our native species of wildlife. Habitat is probably your number one factor that you want to make sure is, is really good for those species before you really think about the predator management side of things.